that was just me messing around with the chord progression that I'm going to show you right now. Um, it's called the Axis of Awesome, but um, it basically is four chords that move around the one, the five, the six, and the four chords of the key that you're in. Now, before you go, whoa, what the hell is he talking about with all these numbers? Don't worry about it, I'm going to cover it in this lesson, because I'm also going to cover the theory. That's why I've split this down, this chord progression sort of section of the level four course into a few more sections than just the one. So I'm not just going to show you the chord progression, I'm also going to cover the theory. First we're going to look at the chord progression so you can play it in the key of G. It's basically the following chords. G major. Now you can play any one of the three G majors that I've taught in the beginner guitar course. You can play it with the third finger here, the two fingers on here. Um, and what was the other one that I taught you guys? Oh yeah, with the fourth finger, that was it. <laughs> so you can do any one of those three, it's up to you. The next thing, next chord, is gonna be the fifth chord, which is a D major chord. Just a normal D major chord, nothing new going on there, open position. Next chord is the sixth chord. It's not the sixth chord, but you'll see what I mean in a minute when why I'm referring to these numbers when I'm talking about these chords. E minor. And the final chord of this axis of awesome progression is C major. Now let me just briefly cover these chords for those who may not know what they are. Second finger on the E string, first finger on the A string on the second fret, and third or fourth finger on the third fret on high E. Make sure you've got a clear sound. D major, first finger on the second fret on the G string, second finger on the high E string second fret, the third finger on the third fret on the B string. Then you've got your E minor chord, which is your second and third finger on the second fret on the A and the D strings. Finally, your C major, third finger on the third fret on the A string, the second finger on the second fret on the D string, and finally, the first finger hovering, make sure you're on your tips, on the first fret on the B string. Again, if you want to cover these chords, just check out the beginning guitar course. If you've already covered these, hopefully you skipped over that, that section. Right, now for the tough part. You need to understand key signatures and how we come up with different keys and what sharps and flats are. Now, if you've been following my course, you should know how to work out what the note is on your guitar. So you should be able to know what is a G sharp, what is a A flat. It's the same note. Did you know that? If not, you should check out the level three course because it is in there. And then also, you know, working out notes along your fretboard is very important. And you'll see why when we start working out key signatures. Okay, now I cover key signatures and this sort of theory side in a lot of detail, uh, aimed at intermediate and advanced guitarists in what I call series three uh, chord scale relationships over on the website. Um, so if you want a really in-depth theory lesson, you can go over there. But for beginners, it might be a little bit too out there. The reason that we're doing it is so that you might, for example, you might not want to um, play in the key of G. You might not want to play a G chord. You might be playing, you know, a, you might have an idea for a song. That's what you've got so far, and then you want to throw in the axis of awesome chords, the four chords that you know will work really well, but it doesn't fit the chord progression that you're playing. So you need to move it into the chord progression that you're playing. If you can learn this theory section now, then you'll be able to use it in any key, you'll be able to start on any chord and do the axis of awesome. I'll demonstrate that. If I'm in the key of A, I'll play the axis of awesome. I'm in the axis of awesome and I'm using the four chords. It still sounds like that chord progression, but I'm starting in the key of A. And I can do that because I know the theory, which I'm going to teach you right now. Okay, before you start, you need to make sure that you can work out notes on your fretboard on the low E string. So if I tell you to play a C, you'll be able to work it out. Check out the level three beginner guitar course uh, on the capo section and also about power chords. There's a whole fretboard you know, introduction there. So we're going to start on C, which is on the 8th fret, in case you didn't know. 
Now we're going to apply a pattern to it, and the pattern is very, very, very important. Um, it's a major scale. We've looked at a pentatonic scale so far, but this is a, just another type of scale that sounds a little bit different. But it's very important for working out key signatures and working out what chords you need to play if you shift around these um, progressions. So, you need to, need to memorize this pattern. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Okay? What that means is that from C, you do this pattern, whole step. So not half, not one fret, but two frets. Whole step, half step, so you move only one fret. Whole step, whole step, whole step, and then a one fret move the half step at the end. That draws out the major scale on that one, from, you know, starting from that one note. If you were to work out what notes you were playing from C to C, because you've got another C going on up here, if you were to work out each note as you went along, you would find out it would just go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Pretty simple. No problems there. What happens if you move it to a different note though? If you start, for example, on G, and you do the same pattern, the whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, you're going to have G, whole step, A, whole step, B, half step, C, still all fine natural notes here, then you're going to have three whole steps, D, E, the 14th fret on the low E string is another whole step, but it's not an F natural, it's an F sharp, because we're one fret higher than uh, where we would normally play an F. So you've introduced a sharp and then you've got your half step, which takes you to G. So you've got a sharp there. If you were to do this, uh, map this out, starting on every note on the fretboard, you would find that there is a bit of a pattern going on. There are sharps and there are flats um, in different amounts, depending on which note you start on. All of that is pretty useless knowledge at the moment, but what it does allow you to do is when I was saying the, the first chord, the fifth chord, the sixth chord, and the fourth chord, a one, five, six, four, all I'm, all I'm meaning is, if we were in the key of C, the first chord is C, the fifth chord, you would just count up five notes using that pattern. G. Okay, so C to G. So we've got the first chord, C to G. That's the first part of the axis of awesome. Then I said the sixth chord. So you just count up that musical alphabet that you've worked out. We know in the key of C it's all natural notes, because that's what I told you. Um, you see, just count up six. C, D, E, F, G, A. And in the axis of awesome, the sixth chord is a minor chord. So you've got C to G to A minor. The final chord then I said was a four chord. So same theory, C, D, E, F. And the fourth chord in the axis of awesome is a major chord, F major. Axis of awesome, now in the key of C. So let's move it into the key of A, okay? So you're in the key of A. What's the fifth chord? Well, do your whole step, half step pattern. You should memorize it, because it will be useful. Start on A, A is your one chord. So A major. Let's work out what the fifth chord is. Whole step, whole step, half step. So it's one, two, three, four, five, whole step. E, E major. Then it's the sixth chord. One, two, three, four, five. Whole step after that. It's an F sharp this time. And the sixth chord is minor. And then finally the fourth chord. One, two, three, four. D major. So you've got A major. E major. F sharp minor. D major. Around, around. Um, 
that's basically the axis of awesome um, with the theory involved as well. Like I said, if you want a really in-depth um, music theory lesson, I'm going to be making a practical music theory course for beginner guitarists. In the meantime, you might like to check out series three if you're a more intermediate guy who wants to guy or girl who wants to look at um, you know the theory in a bit more detail. You might like to check that that one out. So. Access of Awesome, not only do you now know the chord progression in the key of G, which I showed you, but if you're really switched on and you're really pushing yourself, you'll also know the theory, so that if you want to do it in the key of A, you might be able to stand a chance at creating the chord progression of the Axis of Awesome in whatever key you like. Pretty cool, eh? So, that's the Axis of Awesome. Um, we're going to be looking at two other types of very famous chord progressions. Chord progressions are a really good way to start a song, so if you've got some ideas on chord progressions, which is what I'm trying to give you here, it will stand you in really good stead if you ever um, enter a band and you want to sort of contribute something. So, the next thing we're going to be looking at is the blues, 12 bar blues. So, I'll see you guys in the next lesson, but we're going to be looking at that. Catch you guys then, see you later.